<sighs> so I see Superfly 2018 has finally made its release this week, and I saw. Well, I really didn't watch the reviews, but I I just saw the thumbnails, and I'm like, all right, so we got some reviews for Superfly. It has dropped, but you know what? I'm not going to give this movie the satisfaction. I'm going to review the real Superfly, 1972's Ron O'Neill, Gordon Parks Jr., Superfly, the OG. Let's get into this shit. Alright, so like I said, I'm going to be reviewing The Real Superfly, the 1972 classic directed by Gordon Parks Jr., whose pops directed the movie Shaft, which really kicked off the genre of the black exploitation. So Superfly is the story of Priest, played by the legendary Ron O'Neill. Priest is the HNIC. He's like the big dog of New York City. He has 50 men, over 50 people in his organization. I guess those are like the head people, and those people, I guess, have like hundreds of people. So Priest is like the man, or so we think he is. But in reality, Priest works for the deputy commissioner, who is really in charge of the whole drug business, and he keeps everybody in line. He keeps everybody working and pushing the dope in the streets. And Priest, I guess, has an epiphany of, you know, why am I doing this? Like, I've been doing this for so long. Yeah, I made a lot of money, but at the end of the day, this guy is over me and he's really calling the shots and I just, I don't want to live this life no more, man. I want to get out this life. And he makes an attempt to get out, out of the drug life and so he comes up with the plan that he shares with his man, Eddie. I can't remember the actor who played Eddie, but Eddie is all like, look here, man. And Snoop actually bit off of this shit in his album when he was like, look, man, you want to get out the game? Man, you got a color TV, man, eight tracks uh, player in every room and can snort a piece of dope every day. That's the American dream, nigga. Well, ain't it? Man, you better come on in. So Eddie's about that life. Eddie doesn't want to get out, man. But Priest, he's just had enough. He wants to get out. He he has a plan to come up with the score to make a million dollars in cash, which you got to remember, this is 1972. So back then, a million dollars was a lot, especially on the street. And at first, Eddie's along with it. But then, you know, twists and turns happen. And it's like, you know, then you get betrayal and... You know, all kind of drama goes down, and it's not as easy as Priest thought it was to get out of the game. And also, he has his mentor named Scatter, who supplies Priest with the dope to make this final score to get out of the game. And he also offers Scatter to get out of the game, but Scatter knows he's an old man. He's been working for this de deputy commissioner for the longest, you know what I mean? So it's like, man, I'm too old to get out of this shit. So you got Eddie who's comfortable with the life. You got Scatter who's just an old man who's just stuck in his ways, and it's like, look, this is all I got. What am I going to do after this? But Priest is focused, he's determined to get out this game, and that's the movie Superfly. And also his lady, um, Georgia, who's his backbone, she, he, she's his ride or die, down for him no matter what. So, I mean, you can look at Superfly, like, we think of black exploitation, you think exploitation. You think, you know, lots of sex, lots of violence, over-the-top acting, you know what I'm saying? Just really amplifying what, what black life was, but when you watch Superfly, Superfly really doesn't doesn't glorify drugs. It doesn't glorify pimping and, and, and sex and all that. Superfly is really a movie about a, a street guy trying to get out the game. So that's why I say it stands out from the other ones because it is it's a message of, look, you know, I, I made some bad decisions in life and now it's time for me to, to flip the script and get out this shit. So I feel like it really had a powerful message and the score, the score of this movie was ill. The movie itself, when you watch Superfly, the production, I'm not going to lie, the production is shit. If you've never seen it before and you watch this movie, uh, <laughs> Black Dynamite actually took from this as far as like making fun of it. So sometimes you can see the boom microphone. Sometimes you can see the wire from the camera when they're having a chase scene. When they had that, uh, that fight at the end where it was in slow motion. And when you're doing a slow motion fight, you have to make it look really real because... When you miss a punch by a mile in slow motion, you're really going to see that. So, yeah, the, the fight scenes were not really choreographed well. It, the, the, all right, you know, the, the movie had a low, it, it had a shoestring budget. So, to today's standards, if you watch Superfly, you might laugh at it because of how bad it is uh, visually and technically wise. But when you really look at the story and how the soundtrack to the movie actually helped tell the story and that's something we definitely don't see in movies anymore where you have a soundtrack 
that actually helps the story. And matter of fact, I mean, I would argue and say that the soundtrack was actually better than the movie. But because it was so good, it really helped the movie and helped tell the story. And that's what I really loved about it. As far as the performances, Ron O'Neill knocked it out the park as, as Priest. He doesn't play... Uh, over the top, uh, you know, tough guy, gangster, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's just a regular guy. He in the street game, and he just wants to get out. But at the same time, he has moments where he shows that he's that nigga. And look, even though, yeah, I, I'm trying to go in the straight and narrow, but if you try me, I'll fuck you up. And and he balances that beautifully where it's like, yeah, I, I could be cool, but then I could be gangster when I need to be, so don't push me. Even with this man, Eddie, you know, because Eddie is all about that life. But Priest kind of steps to Eddie like, bro, you know what I'm saying? Forget, you know, remember who I am. So, yeah, man, um, if you haven't seen this movie before, just watch it with the open mind of this was made in 1972. So, yeah, it might not have aged well, but compared to the shit that they're trying to give us now, out of all the stories you can tell, out of all the black stories you can tell, you want to retell Superfly, but put it in an Atlanta setting with trap music. And nah, everything about it is just wrong. I mean, look, I'm all about rebooting a franchise. Like, if you reboot a franchise and it's done right, it can work. All right, especially if you really, um, if it's canon to the other movies. Like, for example, all right, Force Awakens. A lot of people didn't like Force Awakens, but I thought it was a good reintroduction to the Star Wars universe and it kicked things off, even though Star Wars is going on the decline. But Force Awakens really tugged at the nostalgia strings, and then it had something for the new generation as well and brought us together, so that's why it was a success. A movie like Creed that takes place in the Rocky universe, it caters to the old Rocky fans because it's canon and, you know, it pays homage, it shows respect to the Rocky franchise, but yet it has something for the newer generation because it introduces, you know, this new universe, okay? Uh, Cobra Kai, my favorite show of this year. Cobra Kai, another one. Me and my daughter watched that together, and it has something for the new generation at the same time for the old heads like myself. So when there's a perfect balance and it's done right, you can do it right, and, and, and it works. Superfly, it looks like it's not paying homage to nothing. It's just taking that story that was told, uh, putting its own twist on it, which in a lot of times there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's, it's always good to, to be creative and put your own twist on things, but... A movie, a, something, a movie like Superfly, which is a classic, which is beloved, and what you know, it has real significance in the black community, especially. Man, show some respect, man. I, I, I just, I looked at the trailer and I knew it was gonna be shit. And matter of fact, I did watch two reviews on this movie, and they, they shit on it. And I, I mean, they said what I already knew was gonna happen. So I'm like, nah, I'm not gonna review the new Superfly. I'm gonna do the old one. And, and, and show respect and, and put it out there. So if you haven't seen Superfly, check it out, man. Check out the 1972 one. Fuck that 2018 shit. Just leave that in the back burner. Check out 1972 Superfly. So I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to give Ron O'Neill's Superfly 1972 an A. A. Only reason I couldn't give it an A plus was because, like I said, the production was not really good it, it didn't really age well but for everything the movie stood for and what it was trying to say it it really stood out among the other black exploitation films in my opinion so that's my grade y'all so what do you think about superfly comment below comment freely thank you for watching as always this is rashad g signing out see you in the next video